So this is our coleslaw, or coleslaw, sauerkraut. Uh, we marked August 3, um, it's August 10th, seven days later, not a big deal. We've been busy, so we're gonna check it, see if it's where we want it to be. If it is, put it in these jars and then refrigerate it. So there's our bag of water that we seal the top with. And we've got our stones in here. The water did its job. There's not a lot. There's a little bit of the white fungus or whatever it is, bacteria that forms on the top. Just a little bit. We got this little coffee strainer here. We'll just pull that out and away from it. So it just gets this little this white stuff on top. I just don't. All right get it that's it that's where the air got to the liquid any little bit of liquid that's what happens if you let air get to it that's why it's important if we didn't have that bag of water on top creating a constant airlock you'd have a big layer of that white scum over the top which you can pull off doesn't hurt your sauerkraut I would just like avoiding it and keeping that airlock on top helps do that because we want this juice when we pack our jars, we'll pour the juice here. That's full of, full of probiotics, full of good stuff. So we got that. The last thing, if you remember, we put cabbage leaves on top, just another layer. Pull them out. And that's everything. Now, just a little bit more of that film on top. We'll just, you can see that there's a little bit of sauerkraut floating up. It looks pretty good. So, let me just get that up. It smells really good. It smells like sauerkraut. So, I'm going to take some out. I'm just going to put a little bit in there. Perfect. Really good. Wonderful. We'll be eating that every day. Mmm, that's good. Mmm. And once you get it cold, I don't know what it is about getting sauerkraut chilled, but it's even better. But now we can Eat some of this raw every day for our microflora in our gut. Mm. Put it on our homemade bratwurst. Mmm. Mmm. That is tasty. Now, all you do, and this is the important part. If you're making sauerkraut for flavor only, you don't care about the nutritional benefits, the microflora, um, you can can it or you can freeze it. But if you can, i.e. cook your sauerkraut or you freeze it, you're going to kill the probiotics that are in this naturally, the bacteria that's thriving in this. So what we do, pack it in there tight. See, you want that juice to cover it. We pack it in these quart jars. You put a lid on it, a canning lid, and a ring. And you don't need a brand new, a brand new lid. You can save your used ones because you're not worrying about an airtight seal. You just want to keep your liquid from leaking out. So we can screw a cap on there tight enough where you can lay these sideways and down in your crisper drawer or anywhere you want to put them. And these will all go into our refrigerator. And then as we eat them, we'll have more space. But then when you get down to where you got a couple jars left, it's time to make more. 
we're probably going to go ahead and make another batch. We got friends that want some, and we got a bunch of cabbage in the garden coming on, so we're going to make another batch this week. Um, so you see how I pack that in there? You got the juice on the top. Just like that. You put a lid on it. Put a ring on it. Oh, that's good sauerkraut. It's very good. Good batch. And there it is. There's your sauerkraut. Like I said, you can lay it on its side. It's better if you can. Keep it up. Otherwise, you're going to get a wider area where it doesn't get as much liquid on it. But there it is. Beautiful. And we're putting that in the refrigerator, and that's where it'll stay. And then you just pull it out as you want to eat some. That keeps those mite, those uh, the bacteria alive and well. Uh, the probiotics and that's good for your stomach um, again if you don't want to refrigerate it you just want your sauerkraut for a taste there's nothing wrong with freezing it or canning it um, you would do the same thing here you would leave a half inch space and I don't want to give you the wrong information let me look real quick I have to look this one up because we never can our sauerkraut. So I don't want to, I'm pretty sure it's just hot water bath. You're not, you're not going to pressure can this, but I'm going to double check. You can see I've had this a long time. There's the cover. The ball blue book. Now there's a really big thick book too, but this is all you need. This will tell you everything you need, everything we're showing you. Any of these things we do when it comes to canning. With, you know, with the exception of maybe little tweaks we've done on seasoning and stuff, but you want, this will give you the basics. So I'm going to look up sauerkraut. Do, 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 do. Sauerkraut, 36. Right here's our pie filling recipes. Going to be making some of that this week. Blackberry pie filling. we got more blackberries, so stay tuned for that video. Coming up tonight or tomorrow because we got elderberries on. we got a five-gallon bucket of elderberries around here somewhere. They're on. We got blackberry wine working over here. We got blackberries continue to come on. I'm picking more tonight. We're going to make blackberry pie filling with that. We got sauerkraut. It's just crazy right now. We got new swarm of bees yesterday. It's like everything's happening at once. So, anyways, back to the topic here. I'm getting lost. 36. Sauerkraut. Bring sauerkraut to a simmer. Do not boil. Pack hot into jars, leaving a half inch headspace, like I said. Half inch headspace is right about here. Now, you can get canning tools. You buy a ball canning set, you get the tongs for the jars, you get the funnel, you'll also get this neat little gadget here. This is a depth gauge, okay? This is really, really neat. You want, you want one inch? You put that down in there one inch and you can see where it went. One inch, if you can see there, takes you right here. That's one inch. Half inch takes you halfway. So if I put this on half inch, I don't use this. I've done this so long, but just so you know, you put it on half inch right there. It's about halfway up, right up here. So you want half inch headspace. You don't want to fill it to the top. You're going to get cooking out and it's not going to seal properly. So anyways, back to sauerkraut. You want to bring it to a simmer. Do not boil. You want to pack hot into jars, leaving half inch head space. And then you're going to cover with hot liquid, leaving half inch head, um, half inch head space. That means the liquid. You're going to pack your sauerkraut and you're going to push it in. And then you're going to put enough liquid on there to cover that. Just like that. Okay, this is a little fuller. Just imagine that's down about a quarter inch. Okay, you're going to remove air bubbles. Um, process pints 15 minutes and quarts 20 minutes in boiling water bath. So you don't have to worry about pressure. Can I didn't think you did, but I didn't want to say it and be wrong. So you hot water bath your sauerkraut. If that's the way you want to do it, you just want to put it on the shelf, use it when you want to use it. 
just like in the store and you get it out of the can, same thing. If you want to freeze it, put it in plastic containers or you can uh, um, put them in Ziploc bags, however you prefer. But again, we want this for what it does for our bodies. So we keep it fresh, we put it in the fridge. So we're going to finish this up. Um, we probably got, I don't know, six, eight quarts in here. We're up to about here. So it went down, like I said it would, you know, as it works, it goes down. We got plenty of juice in there. Now, with that juice, because we're going to make another batch right away, this is that juice. If you've got extra juice, put it in a little jar, a pint jar, a one cup, glass jar. Put it in your refrigerator so the next time you make sauerkraut, you're going to dump that in there on your raw cabbage that you just pressed in there. And that's going to, that's going to jumpstart your, uh, your culture here. Especially if you get a batch like this, you're like, wow, this really turned out great. Okay, bacteria and yeast, they're like we are. They're all different. There's different strains out there. Some are good, some are bad, some are outstanding. Um, that's why if you make wine or cider from year to year, not only does it matter how much sugar's in your grapes or your apples, but what was the prevalent, it's just like getting the flu. Um, you know, what strain is more dominant that particular year? So if you get a good strain of bacteria, I mean, we didn't put anything in there. We just, we're letting it happen naturally. But when you get a good strain, it's really good. You can control that the next time. So put that jar of liquid, tuck it away in the back of your fridge. Next time you're going to make a batch, pour that in there, and you'll get the same thing because you've already, you already. It's like adding yeast into bread or yeast into wine. You're going to get that specific um, variety. So um, if you have any questions, let us know. If you like what you saw, give us a like. Thank you. Thank you.